underneath the cloudy sky.
give you what you need. No woman can express to you how you how you feel. Oh, but look at the Bible says. The Bible says in Luke 15, 17. And when he and when he y'all gonna read that with me. And when he did what? Oh, somebody, you need to hear his word today. You wait on God to do it. But you're going to have to do it for yourself. You're going to have to tell yourself, I'm coming out. Y'all, y'all missing it. Uh, 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 and when he would have fainted, uh, when he would have given up, uh, the Bible says, and he came uh, to what? He didn't go to somebody else. He didn't say, God, it's me. Standing in the need of prayer once more. He didn't say, God, I know. You promised me. I don't want to feel bad. I just need to ask one more time. The Bible said, but when he had come to himself, in other words, he had to get himself in the right perspective. Because the situation that he was in wasn't as bad as he thought. Oh, the situation wasn't as bad as he thought. Because it was one thing left for him to do. Somebody said, what was the one thing for him to do? That one thing was he had to change his perception. He had to stop looking at his situation as being as bad as it was. And he had to say, what is it? There's another thought. I feel amped. Oh, yes, sir. And I said, when he come to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to what? In other words, my daddy got so much. I'm not in a situation that I don't have hope. Because my daddy, he though he gave me what I asked him for, he still had enough to keep his servants fed. And though I asked God before, I messed up with it. I didn't do with it what I was supposed to. Oh, but I know my father. He's able to provide for everybody else. And he still got enough for me. Somebody you need to say, I come out. Oh, look what the Bible says. He said, my father had bread enough and to spend. And I perished with hunger. The young man said, look at here. I'm up in here feeling bad for myself. I'm feeling down. All the press. Angry with other people's blessing. Frustrated about everything I've lost. He said, but look at here. When I look and remember whose I am. When I look and remember who, who I belong to. Y'all ever help me here. When I remember whose blood is running to my profane. I know that my father has much more. And if I need it, all I gotta do is come out. And when I come out of my situation, I The reason why some of us uh, can't get what God has for us, because uh, we're in a place of pity, uh, we're in a place of anger, uh, frustration. Uh, uh, but when you come out of it, uh, and you can enter into the joy of the Lord, uh, you can look at that thing you used to be in, uh, and say, hey, y'all ever help me? Oh, watch this. The people said, uh, he said, my father. Uh, somebody said, my father. Who's your daddy? Uh, y'all, y'all gonna help me. Who's your daddy? Uh, who's your daddy? Uh, y'all scared? Who's your daddy? Jesus Christ uh, is my father. Uh, and because he's my father, uh, uh, he feeds a lily uh, of the field. Uh, he feeds a sparrow. Uh, uh, and none of them perish. And because he fed the lilies of the field, because he fed the sparrow that flies in the air, how much more will your heavenly Father? I'm coming out. Maybe y'all ready to tell. 
Tell your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. Now don't, don't give me that weak stuff. Tell your neighbor. I'm coming out. Y'all ain't from Minnesota. I got to give y'all some more. Yes or no? Y'all ain't talking to me. 
You think you got a right 20 years later to be mad at the person that, <coughs> excuse me, that died 10 years ago. That's crazy. You angry about something you can't change and you mad at somebody who can no longer even care. But you feel justified. Because what? You don't know what they did. Now you let them control and destroy the rest of your life because you refuse to come out of it. Somebody said, well, what are you talking about coming out? You got to come out of the way you, you stuck in your mind. You got to come out the way you allowed yourself to be imprisoned by your past. Because some of us will eat the mess of where we are just simply because we're afraid to see what the free future has for us. Somebody said, your future, your future looks brighter. Looks brighter. Y'all didn't know that one. Your future, your future looks, brighter. looks brighter. But you can't see it because you're still stuck in the dark. How many of you ever blacked out your rooms? And you didn't know if it was day or night outside. You don't know, you didn't know if it was sunny or cloudy. You didn't know until you did what? You went and pulled up the blinds. And then back in the day, you wind up the shade. And then when the sun started coming in, you felt better. Do you know what I'm trying to tell some of you? The problem is you laying when you need to get up. You now allow your pity party to be your cesspool of frustration and anger. And it's now turning into your sickness. You can't be free because you hadn't changed your mind about it. Y'all ain't talking to me. Somebody said, I'm. I'm. I am coming, I'm coming out. out. Now let me take y'all a Jonah and show y'all this. Because the Lord didn't direct me to preach you about the things that the devil had you bound in. But he's directing me to preach to you the things that we cause on ourselves. Because see again, God will set you free from sin. He'll set you free from other things. But you'll hold yourself bondage to yourself. Somebody can say amen. amen. You 70 something years old and you still Live in your past of what you did when you were 17. You're 20 years old, but you're still concerned about what you stole out of your grandmother's purse when you were five and she died and you never had a chance to ask her to forgive you. That doesn't make any sense to me. Does it make any sense to any of you? So if we've been made free in Jesus, why are you still stuck? Why are you still stuck? Look at the Bible says. Jonah chapter 1 verse 17. Says. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish. To swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish. Three days. And three nights. Jonah. Winds up. On a ship. That he paid for. Going to Tarsus. But his assignment was to go to Nineveh. Now, Jonah didn't wind up in the fish's belly because God was angry with him or because God wanted to punish him. Jonah wound up in the fish's belly because Jonah decided to go somewhere else when he was told to go somewhere else. Yes. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So the Bible says now God has prepared a great fish. And Jonah is in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Y'all see that? Now go right on into chapter 2. Verse 1 says, then Jonah did what? Jonah did what? Jonah did what? Until who? Y'all all, y'all know what Jonah is? Jonah is an Old Testament book in the Bible. I need y'all to see this. Jonah, then Jonah did what? 
pray where? Out of now, God didn't speak into the belly of a fish, did he? Jonah did what? Pray when? When? Somebody gonna get it. Somebody gonna get what I'm asking. When? While he was in his situation. Who caused it? When did Jonah pray while he was in his situation? Yeah, y'all just started getting it. Who caused it? When did Jonah pray to his God? While he was in his situation. See, some of y'all trying to be so politically correct. You want to say what the scriptures say. But I'm trying to get you to understand how it's practical and how it connects to you. Because so many times we know what the Bible says, but we don't apply it because we don't understand what that means to us. Jonah didn't pray to God after everything was well. And what I want you to understand, who caused it? Jonah. And where did Jonah pray? While he was still in the situation, he caused Oh, y'all need to help me here. The devil always telling you, ain't no need for you to pray. God ain't hearing you. You cause this. You think God gonna help you? Yeah, so I'm trying to give somebody some freedom today. Jonah prayed to God while he was in the situation he caused on himself. Somebody said, I'm coming. I'm coming, I'm coming out. Nobody says. And the Bible said that he cried. And he said, I cried by what? Of my affliction unto who? The Lord. Jonah said, yeah, I didn't assess this whole thing, and I know I'm the reason why I'm here. But where shall I turn? I can't go anywhere else. You are my only help. You are my only hope. Yes, yes. So as long as you stay away from God, the longer you prolong your suffering. Y'all ain't helping me. You can't come out until you acknowledge I'm the cause. And I'm ready to get out of this mess. So I'm going to stop playing like ain't nothing wrong. I'm fine. Everything good. Uh-uh, honey. You got to realize, hey, I caused this. God, help me to get this thing right. Help me to get myself together so I can come out of this and enjoy what you have for me. But why is God going to hear me? I don't deserve him to hear me. Well, go to somebody else and see how they can help you. That's what you've been doing. You've been going to other people and they can't help you. They can't do nothing for you. They feel sorry for you. They try to ease it for you. But guess what? It don't touch the void that's really in your soul. Look at this. Look what he says. He says, And I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. When? Out of the belly of hell. Y'all still again. When? In the situation. While Jonah was in the situation, he calls on himself. Y'all see how y'all need to see that? Because y'all so politically correct with scriptures, y'all missing what y'all need to. Y'all, y'all missing. You're missing what you need to help you come out of your situation because you read the Bible as verbs and nouns and conjunctions. Conjunctions, what's your functions? You need to be able to make it applicable. If Jonah can pray to God while he's in his situation, he calls on himself. Then while I'm in my mess, I call on myself. I can call out to God and say, God. Somebody said, I'm, I'm coming out. I hope y'all getting this today. Look what he says. He says, he says, while I, in the belly of hell cried I, and thou did what? Heardest my voice. Even my own choices, even my own sin couldn't keep God from hearing me. Because he said a broken heart and that of a contrite spirit, he will not what? He will not despise. Y'all got quiet. Y'all just y'all say, the preacher say God gonna bless my sins. He ain't gonna bless your sin. But he ain't gonna let you stay in your sin and you crying to come out of your sin. 
Then the Bible said, if thou would confess thy sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your, your sins and cleanse you of all your what? So the reason why you're still in condemnation is because you hadn't done what you need to do to be free of it. Help me somebody. Look at verse 3. For thou hast cast me into the deep in the midst of the what? The sea. And the floods can pass me about all thy what? And now Joel, Jonah is telling you the scenery of his suffering. Jonah said, y'all think y'all been through? Jonah said, I done been through. He said, I done seen the waves and everything crashing in, and I have no place to run to. Look what he says. Look what he says. He says, he says, then said I what? Yet. Now, my choices, my sins have separated you and me. Because I chose to do my own thing, God. You just allowed me to go my own way. And I don't feel your presence. But Jonah says, but I... Y'all ain't going to go there with me. What did Jonah say? Y'all reading the Bible? What did Jonah say? What does Jonah say? What? Yet I will look again toward thy holy I will what? I will look. I will again. In other words, I'm coming out because I'm going to do something about what I've caused on myself. He said, I'm going to look again until what? The holy temple. The only place where I can get help is from God. Sitting in your mess talking about look at what I caused. Why ain't nobody stopped me? Why didn't let this happen to me? As long as you do that, you will stay in what you in. But if you remember, I can turn away from this and turn to God. Somebody you can say, all right. I'm coming out. Look, 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 look at this. Look at this. Look what he says. He says, for thou has cast me into the deep and in the midst of the seas and the floods can pass me about all thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said what? I am cast out of thy sight. Yet I am what? Cast out of thy sight. Yeah, well I look again towards thy holy temple. The waters can pass me about even what? To the soul. But death closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. Any of you ever felt like you being choked by your problems? Any of you ever feel like just something got to spoon? Got you by the throat? Any of you ever feel like when you go to sleep, it just seems like when you start worrying and wrestling about everything, it just choke you and you wake up like, okay. Oh, hey. Any of you ever had that to happen? You don't have to tell me. Please turn all the cell phones off. Any of y'all ever felt like that? You can't sleep because your problems got you away. You know why your problems still got you away? Because you entertaining them. Any of y'all ever notice how a TV annoys you when you're trying to sleep? Any of y'all ever had your TV to annoy you while you were sleeping? What do you have to do? Shut it off. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Come out of that mess. Stop letting things control you because you got the power to control it. You say, Pastor, how do, I, how do I control the thoughts coming to me? Stop thinking them. You say, how do you stop thinking stuff? You do it all the time. When you know you shouldn't be thinking something, what do you do? You change your thought. You go to thinking about something else, don't you? You do it all the time. Stop acting like you don't do it all the time. So my point is, you get to a place where it's comfortable and you entertain certain thoughts because they're familiar to you. Some of you almost go to sleep at night going, okay, when, when them dreams coming, when them thoughts coming, 
And when you wake up in the morning, like, oh man, I didn't even dream tonight. Because that's now your place of comfort. The thing that brings you discomfort, you now have found comfort in. You know why? Because it's familiar. Why don't you get familiar with the things that God has in store for you? Because the son, in the first reading that we did in Luke chapter 15, though he took what his father gave him and misappropriated it, he still had the ability to obtain more because his father still had some. Jonah, though he forfeited where he was supposed to be, Jonah was not out of that which was expected of him because God still needed him. I'm trying to help somebody here. You think that because you went where you went and did what you did for so long, God has now forfeited his call upon your life. But the Bible said that gifts and talents are without repentance. Now, I know the old church thought that meant that God gives to people who are not saved. That's not what that means. That verse simply means that God never changes his mind about what he gave you. And if he gave you a talent or a gift and you misappropriate it or you use it in the wrong place, God ain't going to take it from you. Because it's in you. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. That's why you see people start out in the church, R&B singers and everything else, and they do it beautifully. And you go, oh my gosh, you heard that voice? God didn't take it from them when they took it to the world. Because God does not repent of the gifts that he gives you. So what I'm telling you is your call is still your call. But the only reason why you're not operating in your call for God is because you refuse to come out of your mistake. You refuse to allow yourself to be in the liberty where with God has made you free. Yeah, y'all looking confused. You can be in the church and not fulfilling your purpose. Because you be like, why, why would God want to use me? And nah, 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 nah. God is schizophrenic. He doesn't know what he wants. Y'all think? You don't think God knows you better than you? You don't think he knew you would make the mistakes that he made? You did? You made? Just like the Bible says, he makes a way of escape for you. You in it, but he said, come on out now. Guess who has to take make the choice to come out? We do. You do. And some of us say, God, give me another week. I'll be back to you in another week. <laughs> God, you still there? I'll be back in six more days. I said a week. This is day number one. I'll be back in six more days. <laughs> you come in to see if he's still calling. But you ain't ready to surrender to him. Jesus. Because now your flesh fooling you. Your flesh telling you, man, you ain't ready to give this up. That's why some people can't be saved. Because they feel the pull of God. But their flesh telling them, man, we can't do that. How does your flesh know? The things that God is spiritually discerning and cannot be understood by them. So how does your flesh know what God has for it? What does your spirit say? Your spirit's what's happening. You come on, you this ain't right. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And you turn it off. Because you don't want to hear what the conscience of the word or the spirit is saying to you. Y'all don't see what I'm trying to tell you. Okay, I'm boring y'all. Let me go quickly. Look what it says. It says, Jonah chapter 2, verse 4 says, Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again towards the holy temple. The Lord has compassed me about, even the, even to the soul, the death clothes me around about, weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was what? About me forever. Yet hast thou what? Brought up my life from corruption. Oh Lord my God. Now, Jonah says, here's my experience. My choices has taken me to some of the darkest places in life. He says, the weeds wrapped around my, my head. 
He said, I've been in prison to my situation. That's what he's saying. He says, when my soul fainted, where? Within me. I did what? Who did that? I. Somebody said, you need to go back to God. Somebody reminded you, right? Uh -uh. The prodigal son came to himself. Jonah said, after my, my choices took me to the darkest place, I remembered. Y'all see that? He said, I remembered. I remembered what? The Lord. The Lord. And my came into thy holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsook forsake their own mercy. In other words, people who believe in fantasies or deceptions, they don't deal with the truth. And that's what I'm telling you. Your, your flesh will tell you it's okay. You ain't doing as bad as you think. That's why we get nosy. Because we want to see how bad other people have it so we can compare ourselves and see where we are whether it's really as bad as what they have. But how do you know, how do you know if, if where they are even compares to where you're supposed to be? Does that make sense? Y'all ain't hear me. You compare yourself next to something or somebody that doesn't have the call or the purpose that you have. So what they can get away with, you can't get away with because your life has purpose. Your sister can do whatever she wants to do as many times as she has and get away with it, but you can't because your purpose is different. But you think that's unfair. That's because you have not tapped into the glory of God. Because y'all know what I found out? When I stopped worrying about what I was not able to do that my brothers and sisters were able to do, I realized why I shouldn't have done some of the things that they did. Because now my purpose has made my life so much easier than some of theirs. Y'all ain't talking to me. But y'all go, man, it ain't fair. It ain't going to be fair when you walk in in favor either. But your problem is you don't want to walk in favor because favor means you got to be by yourself most of the time. Y'all ain't talking to me. But here's the crazy part about that. Even while you in suffering and pain, you by yourself. So if I'm by myself in suffering and pain, I'm going to be by myself walking in favor. Because I'll be singing and whispering and dancing every chance I get. But you rather sit by yourself and go, Call me. Call me. Why don't you be over here and say, oh, God, thank you, thank you, oh, thank you, oh, thank you. Why? Because every way you move, favor. Every time you touch something, favor. So you can be in favor or you can be in poor me, poor me. And we learn to enjoy the poor me's. You know why? Because you can find a buddy up the road who will join you in your pity party. They're going to leave you for, for a moment. But you find another one, and you're like, well, okay, it ain't so bad. Every once in a while, I meet somebody. You know, it's hard to find people walking in real favor. Because yes. people who walk in favor don't brag about it. Somebody can say amen. amen. But when you're in real favor, you just... And then they go, who they think they are? <laughs> what made them so special? You want them. They ain't saying nothing. They just being. That's favor. Am I making sense to anybody? See, I'm trying to get y'all to come out. You stuck because of mindset. I'm finishing right here. He says, look at this. He says, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto the what? Unto thee, into thy what? My prayer reached you. My prayer came to where you were. Then it says, that they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. I will sacrifice unto who? With the voice of what? Thanksgiving. See, one of the big problems y'all have 
Hey, y'all don't know how to make sacrifices unto God. Y'all want God to give y'all everything, but y'all don't want to give him nothing. Jonah said, first thing I got to give him is my thanksgiving. I'm going to sacrifice what? Until they. The voice of my what? Thanksgiving. You sitting there talking about it. It don't take all that. I don't have to do all that. Stop praising God and giving them the sacrifices of faith. Let him see how gratified or how, how much you how grateful you are in who he is and what he does. Yes. Haven't y'all noticed? Let me tell y'all a secret. No, maybe I won't tell y'all a secret. Most people, if you tell them good things about themselves that you do for them, they do even more. Y'all ever notice that? You want people to do stuff good, more good stuff for you? You tell, oh, you know, I just love it when you do that. Oh, that's so good. They're like, for real? Next time they come with twice as much. You know why? Because they like to hear the praise. You do it with your children. Your children do something like, oh, that's so nice. Mama, love you. That's why I love you. And they come back with even more. Because now they want to hear that what? That prayer. Imagine God just sitting down and listening. And you go, oh, God, I love you. God, you're so awesome. He, you think I'm awesome, baby? Here, a little something else. Thank you, Lord. You're so wonderful. You think I'm wonderful? Here, a little something else. Oh, God, you are awesome. Here, a little something else. But what y'all do? That ain't nothing. That don't meet my needs. I won't pay off my bills. I don't want to just pay it for the month. A 2003 car? I thought I was going to get a 2014. What am I supposed to do with that? Oh, but you ain't walking. And you say, God, I want to thank you. The car paid for it. Ain't nothing wrong with the engine. It ain't the prettiest, but I'm going to keep it clean. I'm going to drive it to church and somebody need a ride. I'm going to swing by and pick them up too. Because I'm going to bless you in the small things. I ain't going to despise small beginnings. Because when you get ready to bless me, I'm going to show you I'm going to drive right to church. I'm not going to drive by. Because I'm going to be like, God, I'm going to enjoy my car. But I'm going to drive up and park you go on. The Lord bless me. So I got to go give him praise. Am I talking to anybody? Look what he says. He says, I will sacrifice unto the Lord with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pray that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord and the Lord spake unto the fish, and he what? Jonah couldn't come out until Jonah did something. And what did Jonah do? Jonah had to come out. He had to come to the state of his mind. Hey, I call this. Now I need to repent. Now I need to get some stuff right. And when God heard him, God made his situation let him go. Y'all missed that. When Jonah did what he needed to do to come out, then God made the situation release him. When you do what you need to do to come out, God's going to make the situation release you. The psalmist says it this way as I close. It is good for me that I have been afflicted. That I may learn thy statutes. Psalmist 119, Psalm 119, 72 says, The law of thy mouth is better unto thy thousand of gold and silver. Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments. They that fear thee will be glad when they see me because I have hoped in thy word. O oh Lord, oh I know, O oh Lord, that thy judgments are right and that thou in, is, if thou in faithfulness have afflicted me. Let I pray thee, thy merciful kindness be for my comfort according to thy word unto thy servant 
out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. The psalmist just simply summarizes this lesson and simply say, God, what I wound up in, I deserve to be there. What happened to me, I caused. But it was good for me to have been afflicted. Because now I got a testimony that you brought me out. And that's what I'm trying to tell you all tonight. Today. Any of y'all ready to come out? Yeah. Any of y'all really ready to come? Y'all ain't ready to come out. He said, man, pastor, now you're going to tell me I have to learn something all new. I didn't learn. I'm used to this now. It ain't the best, but at least I know what it is. That's the problem. You've lost the spirit of expectation. You should never get comfortable to the point where you stop looking for more. You don't forsake what you have wanting something else. But you don't get so comfortable with what you've always had to where you stop looking for what is expected to come to you. Does that make sense? You know, I don't miss being in my 20s. I actually look forward to being in my 60s. Y'all want to know why? Because I will be retired and the hustle and bustle of going on people's jobs every day will, be, it will not be something that I miss. But you got to go through and get to the stage in order to appreciate it. I'm going to be sitting there going, oh Lord, I'm 60 something years old, my back hurting, but I don't have to go nowhere if I don't choose to. Y'all you understand know what I'm saying? So you can come out of whatever you in, you just got to change the way you think about it. Stop putting yourself in situations because you won't release yourself. Be free. God's already made you free. He's made a way of escape for you. Stop telling him I don't want the way right now. Or that ain't the way I expected you to bring me out. However he chooses to bring you out, honey, step in it. Because what he's taking you is going to be better than what you ever expected. But you have to trust him. Stop holding yourself in contempt. Because you caused it. Every one of these characters that I read to you, they caused what they had to go through. But did God forsake them when they did the right thing and came out of it? God made a way for them to be re reinstated or provided for them what they had need of. Where else can we turn? Where else can we go if we don't turn to the Lord? Where else can you go? You come and be pastor such and such and such. And I'm limited. So I'm not going to convince you to think you can do whatever you want to and then just come to me and I'll help you, I'll fix it for you. Uh -uh. The same God you've forsaken is the God that I have to pray to. So what I teach you is you go with God first. Because God will always direct you to everybody that you run to all the time. So you go to God first. Anybody ever make you fake? That you don't need to turn to God, just turn to them. That's Antichrist. Because I'm going to point you to Jesus. I'm going to tell you, pray to God first and come back and tell me what God told you to do. You know why? Because what I'm telling you may be my feelings. He said, Pastor, but you say you're a prophet. Yeah, but sometimes even a prophet get caught up in his own emotions. Does he not? Y'all ain't going to talk to me. So I tell you, you got to check with God so that when I give you what I think God said, it'll affirm in you what God told you. Amen, church. Amen. I don't want you to be ignorant, but I want you to be able to walk in the Spirit and know truth. Because ye shall know the truth. So let's say everybody say, and ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. That's how you come out. You, you got to know truth. And when you got truth and you can apply it properly, nothing can bind you. Nothing can, nothing can bind you. That's what I want you to know. Stand with me. Lord, my help with the sleep. <laughs>